Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Show, your source for market intelligence, forecasts, and strategies. Hello, I'm Michael Bull. Thanks for being with us. We have an incredible show for you today. We're going to talk about industrial real estate. So that we're going to talk about warehousing, manufacturing, logistics. And in industrial real estate, you can't talk about that today without talking about online and retail sales and how retail uh, online sales have, have kind of are now part of industrial real estate. Well, please welcome my first guest. It's Ryan Severino. He's a senior economist with Reese. He's joining us on the phone. Ryan, thanks for being with us. Hello, Michael. Thanks for having me on. Always good to uh, to catch up with you. Well, let's look at uh, performance for 2015. You know, how did uh, rents and occupancy uh, wrap up for the year? It seems like things uh, have been going pretty well. Yeah, you know, I would say that the industrial market closed out 2015 in style with a pretty strong finish. For warehouse distribution, vacancy ended the year at about uh, 10.6%, which was down 10 basis points from the third quarter and down about 60 basis points from the end of 2014. Although, you know, supply is ramping up a little bit, I think a lot of people are getting more enthusiastic about the property type. Demand remains strong, and it continues to exceed supply growth. And that's also translating into uh, a little more meaningful rent increase. I think uh, rents for warehouse distribution also performed pretty well. We saw asking rents grow about uh, about 0.8% during the quarter, and they were up uh, about 1.8% for the year. I think on the on the flex R&D side, it was also a good year, too. Uh, vacancy was down to about 10.8% at, at the end of the year. That was a 30 basis points drop during uh, the fourth quarter and down about 100 basis points during the calendar year. And, and again, not surprisingly, you see that kind of movement in vacancy. You're also going to get a pretty good showing on the rental side. Asking rents grew by about 50 basis points during the quarter and about, uh, about 1.7% during the year. So I think the story for both of the major subsectors is that there's a lot of robust demand out there. It continues to exceed supply growth, and that's translating into both vacancy decreases and rent increases. Well, that's great news. And to put it in perspective, what does that look like historically? Are we at uh, rental rates and occupancy that's the best we've seen, or are we not there? No, I mean, we, we are starting to get into that kind of territory where uh, it, 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 it's not quite the hottest market, I think, that we've ever seen. But it's certainly much improved over the last four to five years. I think we're starting to get into territory nationally when we're talking about uh, you know, vacancy levels and rent levels where it's starting to look more like it did before you know, the economy basically punched a big hole in the real estate market. <laughs> so I can't say we're, we're quite back to the, uh, the, the, the feverish environment that we were seeing in, in the decade leading up to the recession, but uh, we, are, we are more rapidly, I think, than a lot of people thought, working our way back to that. Well, you know, the industrial property owners uh, seem to have smiles on their faces uh, these days, and I guess they deserve it. It's been a, a while for them and to see the good times they're having now. And you talked about levels of new supply. Uh, wh where are we? Are, is new supply uh, ramped up? Yeah, I, I think it has made significant strides over the last few years. I think like just about all the other major property types, if you look at what happened with this recession because it was – uh, a balance sheet driven recession there was a big hole in the credit markets for a while it was a lot more challenging than in your typical recession even to get construction and development financing so for a while you started to see construction not be so robust but then as the economy started to get its legs underneath it as you started to see uh, a little more enthusiasm you started to see construction uh, ramp up again fairly quickly to the point where um, what we saw in 2015 was certainly a post-recession high. We haven't seen construction levels, um, you know, in the, the tens, well into the tens of millions of square feet in, since before the downturn. And so I'd say uh, it was a fairly quick escalation once the market started to become a little more confident that uh, not only was the recovery in the economy somewhat entrenched, but the recovery in the property type itself was also entrenched. And of course, each market uh, you want to look at independently, but but overall, uh, you're still comfortable that we've got enough demand for the amount of supply that we're bringing online? Yeah, you know, and this is the thing that I, I, uh, I like about industrial, especially warehouse distribution, is that 
it's going to function to a large extent based on the overall economy. The overall economy is, is of huge importance because as long as we're creating jobs and we're getting, you know, even modest income gains, people are going to go out and spend money. And that's the thing that's so great about industrial. Industrial doesn't care if you're buying something in a store or you're buying it through a browser on your computer or via an app on your smartphone. Uh, it just wants you to buy stuff that needs to be housed somewhere temporarily. And so uh, I've heard some people go as uh, so far to say that industrial is the new retail. I'm, I'm personally not willing to go quite that far just yet, but I get what they're saying. I, I get that. Uh, you're now seeing uh, an, ab- an abundance and variance of sources of demand for uh, industrial space in a way that, that you know, we, we just weren't seeing you know, a couple decades ago. Yeah, well, it is an interesting concept. Uh, you know, we've even seen some large dead malls uh, be raised, and uh, you, know, you have industrial properties built there that are really, uh, you know, they're just delivering the goods. You know, it's just a, a place where they're delivering to the consumers. And we're talking with Ryan Severino with Reese uh, about industrial real estate, about logistics. And and Ryan, so the market's been good for industrial owners. So what's that mean for cap rates and investment sales volume? You know, not surprisingly, there's been a lot of enthusiasm for this property type. We, uh, we haven't quite finalized the data for the year yet, but what I'll tell you is that demand for industrial properties remains strong, especially the high-quality ones. Um, it looks like we're going to have another excellent year. You know, volumes are up, um, you know, well into the tens of billions of dollars. Demand is so robust. Uh, large investors, I would say, are still kind of on the hunt for those larger portfolio deals. Uh, the low-hanging fruit, unfortunately for them, has, has largely been picked from the tree. But uh, I think and you'd like to, they'd like to see uh, some bigger deals where they could put a lot of money to work. Uh, I think that's one of the things that's a little bit challenging about industrial for some of the larger, uh, more institutional investors is that it's difficult to move the needle on a portfolio because the individual deal sizes tend to be small. But that said, um, smaller investors love industrial, too. I think there is, uh, you know, there, there is this understanding out there in the market that the supply-demand dynamics are good and that the economic outlook is uh, still relatively favorable. So uh, no shortage of interest in the property type these days. And so how is that interest impacting cap rates? What's the trends you see there? The cap rates are still headed downward. Uh, wow. You know, I'd say... Average deals uh, in 2015 were going off somewhere, kind of the, you know, the high sixes range. But uh, you know, the stronger deals were coming in well below that. You know, even down toward five uh, percent for some really good ones. And I think, you know, investors are realizing that this is excellent value. That uh, that demand is exceeding supply. That the outlook is uh, a lot more robust. And I think what what you've seen really over the last 12 to 18 months is that investors, I think, who've been priced out of other property types, are now finding uh, value in industrial, and they're seeing the cap rates are uh, relatively attractive. I'd say, you know, again, the one knock is kind of the smaller dollar amount for individual deals, but, eh, you know, that's really only an impediment to some of the, the larger investors. And what do you think, I can't have you on the phone, Ryan, without asking you about this. So, you know, what do you think about the changes in, in FERPTA? Uh, is that going to encourage more foreign investors uh, to invest in the U.S., and is that going to move the needle at all uh, on the market? You know, all else being equal, yeah, I would say yes. I think, um, you know, I, I think the interesting thing is, you know, foreign investors for 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 a long time hadn't really been all that interested in industrial. There was, you know, it was a lot of office and some hotel and, and apartment to a lesser extent, and maybe even some, um, you know, some real trophy caliber retail. But it was often for the longest time kind of looked at as the the you know sort of had, had second-class citizen status. But I think if you have seen what's transpired over the last, oh, 12 to 18 months or so, I think even uh, foreign investors who largely shied away from it are now uh, seriously consider either they've already done deals or they're seriously considering doing deals. And I think, you know, that's an interesting change because I think we continue to be in the United States the harbor and the tempest, especially uh, with a lot of the gyrations we've seen in the economy and markets over the last um, you know, three to three to uh, to six months, and so I think all else being equal, if you're going to give them um, any sort of incentive, I think you know it. it all else being equal, it, it bodes well for their interest in industrial because clearly, um, you know, they have uh, awoken to uh, the opportunities that 
are available in the property type. And, and I think once intelligent investors realize that, um, you know, there's no going back at that point. Yeah, and it makes sense, you know, especially if you, if you consider it, online sales are going to increase. Industrial might be a good place to be. Well, Ryan Severino from Reese, thanks for joining us, sir. Always my pleasure. Good to talk to you, Michael. Thank you. And we're going to take a short break. When we get back, we're going to talk to some principals in the industrial market and get their take on what's going on and their forecast. So thanks for joining us today. I'm Michael Bull. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. Stay with us. We'll have more headed right for you right now. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty, a great place to do business. Excelligent, information for the professionals, and commercial search, properties for sale and lease. To access these companies or for additional videos, podcasts, and articles, visit CREshow.com.